After over 150 years of legal abolition of slavery in the Netherlands, its havoc brings nightmares to every ruling king. Now it was the current Dutch King Willem Alexander's turn. It's because, before the 1st of July, 1873, the Netherlands' Dutch East India Company had generated millions of pounds of that day's currency with slavery. And on this year's anniversary of the legal abolition of slavery, the Dutch king broke out and said some things about his own royal family of Orange Nassau nobody expected. This was the last regret that had choked various previous kings in the Netherlands, and King Willem Alexander finally spoke it out. For this year's anniversary, the stage was set and everybody awaited the Dutch king for his speech, but nobody knew the king would say this. Welcome to a new episode of Black Culture Diary, a channel where we talk about less known and hidden black history, culture, arts, and lost civilization. We scrutinize history here to bring the black culture back on the surface again. We would like to thank you, the members of our community who have been watching our videos and supporting us. For those who are new, we encourage you to join our community in supporting and building a strong black history education medium. In this episode, we will explain what the Dutch King said, jolting the royal family and the citizens of the Netherlands alike. Let's get started. <laughs> Once upon a time in the early 1600s, a remarkable entity came into existence, known officially as the Very Nigda Ustindische Compagnie, but commonly referred to as the Dutch East India Company. But little did people know that this company would engage in one of the worst crimes against humanity, caring for its profits only. It began its journey with a seemingly modest mission, to trade with Mughal India, a region that held the coveted secrets of cotton and silk production eagerly sought after by Europe. Little did anyone know that fate had far grander plans in store for this newly born company. The Dutch government granted it an extraordinary 21-year monopoly on the spice trade with South Asian countries, a stroke of fortune that would forever alter the course of history. With this newfound opportunity, the Dutch East India Company set sail into uncharted waters, embracing new horizons that would lead it to become the world's first ever conglomerate company. The company boldly established colonies, leaving its mark in various corners of the world. By the early 1600s, the VOC achieved a milestone like no other. It became the first company ever to be listed on the stock exchange, signaling its entry into the modern era of multinational corporations. This burgeoning giant drew talents from diverse nations, fortifying its presence and global impact. However, what truly set the VOC apart was its astonishing concentration of power, a reality that would send shivers down the spine of any contemporary observer. Armed with the authority to wage wars, capture prisoners, and even decree executions, the VOC was a force to be reckoned with. It had the power to mint its own currency, negotiate treaties, and establish colonies with unrivaled fearlessness. Such an immense concentration of power allowed the VOC to operate on an unparalleled level of influence in all overseas colonies, without worrying about the Dutch government. The VOC's influence transcended borders and spanned vast territories beyond India and South Asia. For a century, it left its indelible mark on places as far-reaching as Mauritius, South Africa, Indonesia, Taiwan, Japan, Malaysia, Thailand, and Vietnam. Though not all these locations witnessed permanent settlements, the sheer expanse of the VOC's reach underscored the breadth of its operations. The company's emergence coincided with a pivotal moment in Dutch history. The Netherlands had only recently broken free from Spanish rule, forging its path as the Dutch Republic. However, the newfound liberty also brought vulnerability and uncertainty. To safeguard themselves against potential threats, the Dutch Republic turned to the VOC, recognizing it as a conduit to draw wealth from distant lands. The influx of riches fortified the young nation, empowering it to assert independence while extending its grasp over other territories. Yet, the path to prosperity was paved with difficult decisions, at times detached from moral or ideological considerations. Since the Dutch East India Company had the Republic's support, in return for fortune, it wreaked havoc on the colonized nations. This powerful trading organization was driven by an insatiable hunger for profits, and it had no qualms about resorting to ruthless tactics to achieve its economic ambitions. One of its most shameless tools for maximizing gains was the heartless exploitation of enslaved Africans. Before we continue further, 
Tell us, are you enjoying the video? If yes, please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. The VOC held a prominent presence in various Asian colonies, where it thrived on the highly lucrative spice trade. In places like Batavia, now Jakarta, Indonesia, and the Moluccas, the company reaped vast fortunes from crops like sugar, coffee, and spices. But behind this apparent prosperity lay a dark truth. The Vosi relied heavily on enslaved labor to work its plantations. Indigenous people, robbed of their freedom and dignity, toiled under cruel conditions to cultivate and process these prized commodities, all destined for export to Europe. The ruthless exploitation of these enslaved Africans allowed the VOC to produce goods at minimal cost, inflating its profit margins to unprecedented heights. Its market cap had reached 7.9 trillion US dollars in today's value, becoming bigger than Apple, Google, or any other company. Far to the south, at the Cape of Good Hope, modern-day Cape Town in South Africa, the VOC established a vital refreshment station for its voyaging ships. But even in this strategic outpost, the company showed no mercy. It relied on forced labor drawn from distant regions such as Madagascar, Mozambique, and India. These unfortunate souls were coerced into working on the company's farms, building infrastructure, and contributing to various economic activities. Their labor, extracted without recompense, significantly fueled the VOC's ability to supply its ships, slashing costs and maximizing overall profits. But the VOC's reach extended far beyond the boundaries of the Cape Colony and Asian plantations. The vast expanse of the Indian Ocean was also within its grasp, and slavery was rampant in this region. The VOC played an active role in capturing, transporting, and selling enslaved individuals. Once caught in the merciless web of the company's influence, these unfortunate souls became crucial to the functioning of VOC ships. They were subjected to backbreaking tasks such as handling cargo, maintaining ships, and performing other essential duties during long and grueling sea voyages. Their unpaid labor contributed immeasurably to the VOC's overall economic prosperity. In the heart of the Spice Islands, the Moluccas, renowned for their precious spices like nutmeg and cloves, the VOC tightened its grip on the spice trade monopoly. Enslaved labor was enlisted on spice plantations, ensuring a steady and unbroken supply of these highly sought-after commodities. With control over the entire production process, from cultivation to processing and export, the VOC wielded immense power. Dictating prices and extracting maximal profits, the company grew richer and more powerful with each passing day. The Dutch East India Company's reliance on slavery and the slave trade was an ugly truth behind its glittering facade of prosperity. As history unfolded, the cries of the oppressed echoed through the ages, reminding us of the high costs paid by countless souls to fill the coffers of an empire built on the backs of the enslaved. Even though the Dutch East India Company did everything, the royal family of the Netherlands was the one supporting it. That's why now, the Dutch King Willem Alexander came forward to say what nobody earlier did. In a powerful moment that would be etched in history, King Willem Alexander of the Netherlands took a significant and courageous step. At a ceremony marking the 160th anniversary of the legal abolition of slavery in the Netherlands, including its former colonies in the Caribbean, the king stood before a gathered crowd in an Amsterdam park to offer a formal and heartfelt apology for his country's involvement in the transatlantic slave trade. In a display of remarkable transparency, King Willem Alexander did not shy away from acknowledging the historical complicity of the ruling Orange Nassau family in the dark chapters of the slave trade. You should know that no king before has confessed the role of the royal family in slavery. Well, he told the truth because, according to a report commissioned by the Chamber of Deputies, the royal family of the Netherlands earned a fortune of roughly 500 million pounds from slavery. He humbly admitted that they had never taken a stand against this inhumane practice. His words rang with sincerity and empathy as he sought forgiveness from the depths of his heart and soul fully comprehending the immense historical injustice and suffering endured by millions of enslaved individuals. Addressing the issue of racism that still persisted in Dutch society, the king acknowledged that not everyone might readily support his apology. He was right because, after his apology, over 60% of people in the Netherlands went against it. Reflecting on the transatlantic slave trade, the king recognized how it brought immense wealth to the ancestors of the Dutch royal family propelling the nation into what would become known as the golden age of the Dutch Empire and culture during the 16th and 17th centuries. The staggering estimate of around 600,000 Africans forcibly transported to South America and the Caribbean 
as part of this reprehensible trade, spoke to the scale of the atrocities committed. For years, descendants of enslaved individuals had been calling for the king to make this momentous apology, and during the ceremony at the Oosterpark in Amsterdam, their voices were finally heard. Acknowledging that the Dutch East India Company was engaged in a gruesome crime against humanity, and the Dutch royal family made a fortune through it are things which no king has earlier confessed. Yes, Willem Alexander really did change history. However, only an apology and confession do nothing. No matter what the royal families do, their support of slavery will terrify them forever. Did you know that even the royal families earned through slavery? Isn't it the reason why they didn't oppose slavery so their fortune could keep expanding? Let us know your take on whether all the European countries and their royal families should apologize just like the Dutch king did. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. The black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching and until the next video, stay tuned.